I would like to introduce the band now. This band includes students and the heart and soul of IIT Madras, Dr. Kamakurti. The violin is played by Dr. Kamakurti, vocals by Aditya, keyboard by Pranav Arvi, violin again by Satya Narayanan, Carnatic guitar by Gokul, bass guitar by Pranav Rajendran, Nidangam by Prahalad, and Veena by Krishna. The BS degree is the largest online learning degree program in India. It has inspired countless such online degree programs throughout our country. This has provided students from all over our country access to high quality education on a large scale. Being the proud recipient of Abdul Kalam Technology Innovation National Fellowship 2020, IESA Techno Visionary Award 2018 and many more. He is well known for being genius behind India's first microprocessor, Shakti. Above all this, he is the most proud of what he does the best. Be an educator, a guru who teaches to inspire. Dr. Kamakoti believes that happiness is a collective responsibility. Let us all follow his footsteps to live a humble, passionate, and impact-making life. I request Professor Kamakoti, the Director of Indian Institute of Technology, Madras, to address the gathering. Friends and all students of IIT Madras, very hearty welcome to the campus. How many people are visiting for the first time? Wow! Friends, the BS Data Science and the Electronic System course has actually changed the landscape of education across the globe. We are bringing in some things that are in unimaginable, like this band. Please give a good clap to all of them. Probably a standing ovation, please. Thank you. It is very, very important that we have a diverse city in the campus. The unity in the diversity is something which makes campus experience, education experience thoroughly enjoyable. And that's what we have enjoyed today. Friends, this is a course where the youngest is 17 years old. And as on record, the senior most student is 82 years old. This is a course where the father proudly comes and says, myself and my son are doing the course and my son is scoring better than me. <laughs> we are the most youthful population in the world. In the age group of 15 to 35, we are the youngest population in the world. And IIT JE Advanced, which just concluded last Sunday, we are able to cater to at most 1,200 people in this campus. What about the others? The answer is BS Data Science and BS Electronic Systems. And we will be introducing a couple of more degrees down the line. And we have touched. 28,000 students. My target within the next two years, IIT Madras should be proud of announcing that we have 50,000 students enrolled with us. And if each one of the 
IITs, the 23 IITs aspires to do the same thing, we will cater to more than a million students. So any student who attempts for JE Advanced will get some course in some of these IITs. And that should be the dream of such premier institutions. Friends, this particular course, as you all know, have multiple exits. First year is a certificate, second year you go with a foundation uh, diploma, third year with a BSc and the fourth year with a BS. It's very, very important to note that each one is gradually building on, the, on its predecessor. And I sincerely hope that all of you will do the four-year program here and literally make my hand tired by signing your degree certificates. <clears throat> I also want to place a request to all of you. The gross enrollment ratio of our country, number of students who finish plus two and then come to higher education, stands at 27%. And as per, our as per our National Education Policy 2020, we have to increase it to 50% by 2035. BS Data Science and Electronic System will certainly be one path which will ensure that any aspiring student, any intelligent student, will have an opportunity to uh, do an advanced course which will give them sufficient amount of employment and job security and in case they want to do research, much more research opportunities. I want each one of you, yeah, you can clap after this. I want each one of you to go to your village, any village, and motivate at least five students, in which at least three must be girls, to come and pursue a higher degree, wherever it may be. Let us take this. On Paradox 2024, this auspicious day, let us take this as a vow that every one of you will go to your village, any village of your choice, motivate five rural kids to pursue a higher degree. Friends, when we were rated as a country, con consecutively number one institution in the country under the National Institutional Ranking Framework, NIRF, a reporter asked me, are you happy? I gave this answer, how can I be happy if 73% of the children are not even coming to higher education and that we are rated number one? We must have some answer to this, what I can call as a national academic emergency. I think the answer basically remains in motivating and providing this access to all the children, specifically in rural area, to pursue higher education. Today, let us all vow that each one of us present in this auditorium and each one of the friends that whom we are going to interact, let us take a vow to put our best efforts to see every child who is born in this nation, in this great country, Bharat, will, should become at least an undergraduate. Let us take that vow. <clears throat> Today is also Hey, put that slide. Just a minute. Today is also a very, very important day for IIT Madras. Friends, what you are seeing here is the first ever 3D printed rocket indigenously built at IIT Madras campus by our startup Agnikul. And it's the first ever rocket in the globe that basically uses semi-cryogenic fuel and it is launched this morning at 7.45. Day before yesterday was the launch. It got postponed. I thought it is for a good reason and I'm sure now I know the reason. Now this is the rocket we for IIT Madras, sky is no more the limit. <clears throat> the
the video is taking some time to come from Sri Harikota, but once the video is there, we will also try and play it by the end of Paradox. We will show you the video. It is very, very important, friends. Gone are the days where I say I got a 1.5 CR per annum job in some great company. That charisma is gone, right? The charisma today is in what you are seeing there. What you see there is a 3D printed engine. 72 hours, these kids in the rocket factory, if there is time, you can go and visit it in the IIT Madras Research Park. 72 hours, they can print four such engines that will power this rocket, which was originally taking three months. <clears throat> Close to 3,200 soldering points for making that engine is completely avoided because of this 3D printing. This is what we have achieved, and this is what I want every one of you to achieve as alumnus of IIT Madras. I want all of you to be employers rather than employees. We should move away from the days where we are at like this to like this. Last year, friends, IIT Madras had a very, very ambitious scheme. I get some water. One patent every day was the scheme. And last year was a leap year. Last financial year was a leap year. March, April 1, 2023 to 24 to 23 to March 31, 2024. We had February 29. So uh, we put a target 366 patents we should file. We actually filed 379. Friends, motivated by this, already next year April is started. Now we are in May. And already we have touched 85 patents. So we are already patent a day in the next financial year. So patent a day is going to be something it's now become a regular practice at IIT Madras. Now the next thing, Firkya, next thing is that we need 100 startups every year. Every third day, IIT Madras, a new startup like this, like Agnikul, should be born. Where we go into deep exploration, it is not some small technology that we are developing we are reaching much more higher than the sky. And that is what we need. And we have a very robust mechanism inside the campus, which if you have an idea, it will be extremely difficult for you to exit the campus without making a startup. I want all of you who have ideas to come forward and register yourself in this very nice scheme of entrepreneurship cell Center for Innovation, Nirman Pre-Incubator, five incubators we have dedicated for different domains, and then the Gopalakrishnan Deshpande Center, which basically, essentially, uh, makes you survive, makes you face the market, trains you to actually go into a unicorn. I want all of you to very seriously think, this is the motivation. These are 10 kids here, from different parts of India who have come together and launched this beautiful thing. On the slide, up, Podupa. There, there I won't see. Launched this, this particular piece. Last week, we had the first India's commercial secure IoT chip microprocessor developed by another company here. So we are very, very deep into core technology, and we want that to be part of your agenda. So I want all of you here to look at, seriously consider becoming an entrepreneur. And your institute, IIT Madras, will help you become that entrepreneur. Friends, this year, we got a total funding grant of 536 crores, in which 386 crores was given by alumnus. And each one of the pe person who de donated that money, all of them were entrepreneurs. In their entire lifetime, they did not go and attend a single interview. All of them were entrepreneurs. They had their startups. They all started in a garage. Today, they have built multi-multi-billionaires today. Why I'm telling that is that 
entrepreneurship, your idea, your innovation is certainly a road to prosperity. And today, fail, according to Dr. Kalam, is first attempt in learning. If you are a failed entrepreneur, that is the best certificate you can have or the best entry you can have in your bio data. Because failure teaches you many, many lessons which success never teaches you. Even this rocket, this is the fifth attempt and today we have been successful. <laughs> failure also teaches you perseverance. Failure teaches you how to handle situations. Failure teaches you how to face the world. So I really want each one of you here to seriously consider starting a wonderful startup. And you have a big population here, very large age group. You will have advice if you want to form a startup. It is not going to be just young, but you will have your own colleagues in the course, old batchmates in your course, who would have decades of experience, experience that will match some of your age. I am very, very happy today to meet all of you here. And I'm sure you will have a wonderful experience the next seven days in Paradox. And I would love all of you to get into very niche areas that will make our country proud, that will make you all proud, that will also make IIT Madras proud. Thank you very much and wishing you all the best. If there are some questions I can take, this is an interactive session. So far, it's a monologue. So let me have some dialogues. Can you pass the mic? That's one person. Can you stand up? Yes. Where, where are you? What Sir, are my you? name is Abhinav Vishwas Datar. I am from Nashik, Maharashtra. Uh, yes. Which, which stage of the course are you? Yeah, I, I have completed foundation. Huh? I have completed foundation. OK. Yes. Uh, yeah, please uh, ask your question. Sir, you talk about it as an achievement, but uh, I don't see how it is an achievement. When, like, what were we doing in the 70s, the 80s, and 90s when the... the and here, yeah. 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 Okay, good. He's saying, why are you making the microchip now after importing several tons of microchips from outside? It's a very good question. Give a uh, good applause for him. The question is, from digitization point of view, the world is now becoming digital. So far, we have not seen this massive digitalization. And thanks to COVID, which it's also expedited this. Today, the market for digital electronics in the country has become 10 to 20 folds. And that is the reason why many other companies are getting the confidence that they make a product, they can sell it. When you want to develop some technology in the country, there must be some takers. And if there are no takers, specifically in semiconductors, you should have volume of takers. Like we need million takers, billion takers. If you don't have such number of takers, then the cost of each piece will be quite high. And because of this reason, no Indian company, nor India as a country, developed capability in semiconductors because it was not, cost-wise, it was not effective. Today, with the advent of Digital India, lot of digitization, we see a lot of market today. <clears throat> so if we make a chip, this company, MindGrow, which actually has successfully taped out, successfully developed, indigenously designed secure IoT chip based on the Shakti processor, now sees a market market, they are saying that they can go up to 3 million chip within a quarter down the line. And once that comes, the whole business becomes feasible. And that's precisely the reason why India has not developed capability in semiconductors for several years. And now suddenly we are seeing the growth in the market. And that is why these very interesting semiconductor companies and fabs all are coming up in a rapid pace. And we hope we will not only meet these requirements, but we'll also have a leapfrog so that we quickly become leaders in this area of semiconductors. 
Okay? Sir, good morning. Myself Sagar Gujarati. I'm from Banaras. My question is related to startup that how to find the, find the best idea that this idea will work for you if a person has two to four ideas and uh, how to think like he, this, this idea will work for you or this idea will not work for you in initial stages. Absolutely. Very good question. How can I decide whether this idea will work, this idea will not work? That's a million dollar question. Thank you, sir. Right? <laughs> I'm not asking million dollars for the answer, but the, the way we go about here, <clears throat> today, friends, we have an AI-inspired patenting tool available with our institute. If you drop in an idea into that, in terms of, you know, you drop in some text into that, it basically searches all the databases across the world. <clears throat> and comes out with an answer saying, these are all the competing data, uh, the competing patents. These patents are competing. So you get an idea how novel is your patent. That first step is, for your idea to be successful, it must be novel. So the first check you do is what you call as novelty check, and today you have tools which can help you, AI inspired tools, which can basically help you how to find this novelty factor. Once you identify this novelty factor, there are certain market analysis that basically comes up by mentors, by mentors, that's where you need gray hair, you need faculty who can help you on whether these products can be arrived at, whether these systems can be designed or not designed, once your idea is novel, we need to do a careful commercial analysis of this, right? And there are very, very well-oiled, very well, uh, you know, matured methodologies by which you can do a total addressable market analysis. We call it TAM analysis. Once there is a total addressable market and the idea is novel, you can basically go ahead and, uh, you know, invest more time on this to convert this idea into a prototype. And once the prototype is successful, now you go to the market. Some of the niche people will use these technologies and ask them to evaluate this technology. And once you get a successful evaluation, then you start patenting it and also go for launching the product. So this is the, what you call as an idea to product process. So, you have several inter uh, interventions in the middle that can tell you whether this idea is good, whether it is sellable, whether you can make profit, whether it's a good idea to pursue a startup. And if you rigorously follow, and that with 18 hours of work per day will make you very successful. Thank you. Yes. Hello. Uh, good morning, sir. Yeah. My name is Tushar. I am from Kolkata, West Bengal. Uh, I am in diploma level in BS Data Science and Applications. So I have recently graduated from uh, uh, Tamil Nadu Agricultural University with a B.Tech in Agricultural Engineering. And I am heading to University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign in the fall of 2024. So my question is, uh, as an agriculture engineer, we are having hundreds of solutions. But the problem is we are not, not able to reach 14 crore for farmers in our uh, country. So what should we do so that our technologies, the solutions, reaches farmers at the field level? Okay. Thank you, sir. Very interesting question. And uh, I would have loved that if you joined agriculture engineering in I I IIT Karakpur. Because India provides you, India is a country. <clears throat> Please take your seat. India is a country where we need to be proud, for one thing. If you solve a problem in India, you solve it for the entire world. Recent example is vaccine. There was a vaccine that was designed, developed in other parts of the world that didn't work in India because we needed some minus some degree centigrade 
Yesterday, Delhi touched 52.9 degrees centigrade. So it didn't work. But we developed two vaccines. Not only we have put 2.7, 270 crore vaccinations. Not one, two. 270 crore vaccinations. And we have also given donation to other part of the world. That is India. If you solve a problem in India, you, you have a solution for the entire world. Agriculture is one. You have rightly pointed out that we make certain technologies, it is not reaching the farmer. We must use digital electronics now to go and basically enable the farmer to start adopting this technology. For example, I can sit at my home and control the water pump in the field. I can sit at my home and send a drone on the field to take photograph of the crop and also have a small edge intelligence which will collect the data and basically find out if there are certain pests in the crop. I can now sit in the room and in the home and control the water level in the field. I can do quickly analysis of, you know, there is something called in TNAU, they would have taught you intensified rice, rice cultivation, cultivation, where you need to keep some two, two millimeter water and you keep each sapling with one feet by one feet and single sapling. This is how you, you have multiple growth. Now, I can control sitting at my home. And how can I do that? Because today, I have 5G. Right? If 5G was not there, those technologies is irrelevant to the farmer. Because he doesn't get anything by adopting that technology and investing that money. Now, with the advent of 5G, we are able to communicate this back to wherever we want at a quick pace. The narrowband IoT, which is part of the 5G, is also very, very important. Now, friend, why you, should, why you should stay in India? I'm answering that question. Probably you may reconsider after this answer, hopefully. Today, if, if you take United States or other parts of the world, definition of rural from a communication perspective, 5G, 4G perspective, is that there will be a car that will be going at 250 kilometers per hour and you should not lose connectivity. The definition of rural in India is what all I described. I need to run a tractor, I need to run. So what we need in India is what we call as low mobility. In the villages, I don't want to go at 100, 250 kilometers, I can't go. Car will dash, correct? But what I need is low mobility, but I need large coverage. Because I can't put so many equipments, I don't want to dump electronics here. LMLC, low mobility, large coverage. And that is what we need in communication technology. And you know who found that out? In the next release 17 of 5G, how many people have 5G enabled phone? Can you put your hands up? Uh. In the next release of 5G, LMLC will be there. Low mobility, large coverage. Can you just guess who find, found it out? Our Indian institutions headed by IIT Madras. For the first time in the history of telecommunication, we have one patent, one standard essential patent, and that has come out of this place. IIT Madras, IIT Kanpur, IIT Bombay, IIT Delhi, IAC, CWIT, and uh, Samir, some, all these organizations together worked very hard to file this particular patent. And that is relevant today in the area of agriculture. So, friends, to reach technology to the last n mile, first and foremost, the technology should be good. We have a lot. Even TNAU has very, very good Kono Weeder and so many things that you have developed. 
but then that has to be there needs to be a human instrument interface and the most essential thing for that is communication with the advent of 5g we are going to see large large more technologies going into the area of health going into the area of sustainable cities going into the area of agriculture if you carefully look last budget the budget before 2023 budget the finance minister has announced three centers of excellence in the country ai for health ai for agriculture and ai for sustainable cities so this is how we can reach technology to the end user and the main bottleneck till now has been this human instrument interface which we hopefully uh, will be solved by having this very high end communication technology yes hello first of all i love you sir thank you love you too sir can you ask my doubt in hindi huh? i'll try to understand okay thank you sir mera naam sudhanshu kumar hai sir main muzaffarpur bihar se hu जैसा कि आपने बताया कि आई हम लोगों को बहुत सारी हेल्प कर गए एंटरप्रेन्योर बनने में मैं एक छोटा सा कोप कंपनी का को फाउंडर हूँ मैं एक छोटी सी कंपनी रन करता हूँ और मैं फाउंडेशन लेवल में हूँ सर तो मेरा एक क्वेश्चन था सर आईआईटी मद्रास मुझे कैसे हेल्प करेगी मेरी कंपनी को आगे बढ़ाने में और मेरे जैसे बहुत सारे स्टूडेंट हैं सर जो कुछ करना चाहते हैं कुछ बनना चाहते हैं बट कोई उनको अपॉर्चुनिटी नहीं मिल पाती है I'll try an answer in Hindi. If it is wrong, please pardon me. Shama mangta hu. No, sir. <laughs> I can understand in English, but I'm not confident to speak in English. That's why I am asking a question in Hindi. Yes, I will. I will try to respond in Hindi. Thank you, sir. I'll, I'll try my Hindi before all of you. Acha, abhi, aapka jo kuch startup hai, bhai, bhai the, bhai the. Aapka jo kuch startup hai, usme. जो कुछ मार्केट आपके लिए कुछ मार्केट होगा उसी मार्केट के लिए आपका कुछ जानबूझ होना है उसका क्या मार्केट है कैसे उसको क्या चीज बनना है उसमें क्या सिस्टम्स डेवलप करना है इसके बारे में आप कुछ गाइडेंस आपको बहुत आवश्यक है हमारे पास गोपाल कृष्ण देश पांडे सेंटर नाम का एक सेंटर है कि हाउ मेनी पीपल नो क्रिस गोपाल okay reasonably okay he is the founder of infosys how many people know infosys ah so founder is krish gopal krishna right so in a lighter vein if people ask how many people know iit madras put your hands up but people also ask how many people know kamakoti put the same hands up okay <laughs> okay now krish gopal krishna ek bahut bada entrepreneur hai wo infosys ka founder hai उसके साथ देश देश पांडे वो भी बहुत बड़ा ऑन्टरप्रनर है वो वो तेजस नेटवर्क नाम का एक बहुत बड़ा कंपनी शुरू किया है हमारे वो तो हमारा अलुमनस है उन वो कुछ करोड़ों रुपयों रुपये देकर एक सेंटर बना है गोपाल कृष्णन देश पांडे सेंटर उस गोपाल कृष्णन देश पांडे सेंटर का ऑब्जेक्टिव सभी स्टार्टअप्स को एडवाइस देना है सो so, आप पांच दिन यहां रहते हैं ना कितना दिन रहेगा पांच दिन एक दिन जाओ कवाम पे एक रघुतम राव होगा वहां पर हा? उनसे मैं एक आईआईटी मद्रास का स्टूडेंट हूं कुछ स्टार्टअप के लिए कुछ एडवाइस वो एडवाइस देगा उसको लेना हा? ध्यान से उस एडवाइस को फॉलो करना अच्छा हेलो सर नमस्कार माय नेम इज शाम्बवी आई एम फ्रॉम दिल्ली एंड माय क्वेश्चन टू यू इज दिस सर दैट आर एल्डर्स यू टू से दैट वी शुड नॉट रो टू बोर्ड्स एट वन बट नाउ डेज वी आर मल्टी डिसिप्लिनरी स्टूडेंट्स एंड आर लाइफ्स आर अ कंप्लीट हसल सो आई वांटेड टू आस्क यू दैट व्हाट आइडियोलॉजीज वी स्टूडेंट कैन फॉलो सो दैट वी डोंट ओनली फ्लरिश इन आयर डिग्रीज बट आर आल्सो एबल टू डेवलप मल्टी डिसिप्लिनरी सोल्यूशन दैट इन योर वर्ड्स वाज द मेन चेन ब्रेकर ऑफ आर डेटा साइंस प्रोग्राम वेरी गुड सो वी आर नॉट आस्किंग यू टू राइट 
two boats but we are asking you to ride a car which has four wheels okay <laughs> right okay namaskaram okay right so the point friends today i really i have an ambition uh, some faculty are here i want to close all departments in this institute just say institute right faculty can come they can do some work there is some curriculum they can teach any of the course of their choice do research mingle with anyone not this department that department so we want to get rid of that because today if you look at just take this agnikul can you put that uh, video again hello put that slide again if we, uh, if you take this rocket there are seven departments involved in making this rocket seven departments from basic sciences including chemistry physics lot of mathematics so many pdes are getting solved here to basically design material science they have used a metal called inconel fluid flow mechanical engineering aero aerospace of course combustion chemical engineering so seven departments at least are involved and of course computer science we have written the program for navigation control so if you don't have this breadth uh, you need not study every everything cannot be possible but you should have an awareness of how to interact with this right today we all made a performance here right now the violin and veena should know how to interact i don't need and know how to play veena not this guy knows how to play violin but we were able to do something you all clapped i hope the thing was nice to hear right so this language of interface is very very important and that is precisely what we are telling here and that is precisely why the ugc has come and said you can do two degrees at the same time provided the time tables don't clash and you have the bandwidth and you are ready to work hard that is precisely the reason why say you do mechanical engineering at some college come and do data science here because today if you want to fine tune an engine data scientist will do it in 5 days the non data scientist will take 3 months that's the productivity difference if you want to do if you want to you know analyze a business if you are a commerce graduate you want to prepare a projection for next year a non data scientist will take 3 months last quarter they will sit and prepare for the next project you can do it in 3 hours because you have the tools you have the understanding and data science is not just about taking some data and plotting graphs data science is about understanding the data there is a semantics there is a meaning for the data so all these things come up so that is precisely now we are saying don't we don't want you to ride two boats but we want to drive you to drive a bicycle with at least two wheels thank you my name is maria i'm from kerala so uh, as you mentioned uh, uh, and you were encouraging a lot of girls to speak up my question is uh, even in this bs degree program the proportion of girls that are enrolled are relatively no so i just wanted to know your perspective or something that can be done according to you that would encourage more girls to step up into all these roles like entrepreneurship mm. or just uh, generally how like what all qualities can i develop that would encourage more girls to be more confident or just uh, a better leader something along those lines yeah. thank you very much a very very favorite topic for me we are really making lot lot effort to reduce the gender bias and bring in the gender balance every action that we take henceforth or we have been taking over last few years we have carefully seen that there is a, a, a opportunity given for the girls to come and attract the girls to come and basically pursue that particular opportunity let me give you some examples today we have ensured that when i was doing my phd and those days btech there were batches in which there were two girls and remaining all are boys in btech today we have ensured that 20% of our btech admission are for girls and in any course we are not able to fill that 20% 
we actually create super numerary seats to get more girls to come and pursue our BTEC program. We are having a lot of this gender bias doesn't exist in our MSc and PhD in sciences. So that is, we, we actually see a lot more of women who are coming in. And we are making earnest attempt to recruit more women faculty. Friends, that you have asked this question, I'm very, very proud to tell you that IIT Madras is the first IIT to have a lady director of our IIT Madras Zanzibar campus in <laughs> Africa. <laughs> Professor Preeti Agalyam, she's gone all the way from here to Zanzibar and she's started the, co the, the institute and it's almost a year now running it very successfully. That's the power of ladies. And in every step today, I'm also very happy to announce you yesterday night, I had a small review. We have opened a department for medical sciences and technology. And we are admitting students through the ICER aptitude test, right? If you have your younger sisters or who are now writing a plus two, you can encourage them to look at the department of medical science and technology. It has a great future. We are running a course on BS in Medical Sciences and Engineering. And yesterday when I looked at the application, we find that exactly 50% male and 50% female. <laughs> Friends, IIT Madras is the first ever institution to open sports quota at the BTEC admission. Okay. Even in that, every program, we have around 30, 16 to 18 programs. Every program we will be admitting two supernumerary seats in which one is reserved for girls and another is open, not reserved for men. Okay? So, so this is the way at every level we are now trying to encourage girls. So as I told you, the major female population is in tier 2, tier 3 and rural areas. As we all, are, we all have taken a pledge, every one of you go to that village, encourage at least five children to do higher education. And I also told, maybe anticipating this question, that three of them, at least three of them are ladies. Thank you. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Uh, I'm Subhashish Das. I am a diploma student who are currently entering diploma from ES. And I'm the event head of Prena. So I'd like to take, before I ask the question, I'd like to thank you from the bottom of my heart for joining us for the interaction session on 21st and helping so many students through that. Um, so the question I have uh, for you is, uh, uh, the world has its own requirements. The industry needs uh, specific experts and uh, that often determines like uh, how valuable a certain field or a certain discipline is. But that is completely separate from uh, the interests of a person. So my question is for an average person, what is worth following? Should they try to adhere to the industry's expectations or should they try to follow their personal interests? The answer is obvious. Unless you are, unless you have a love for what you are doing, whatever you do will not reach the end point. Right? So, it's very, very important that you follow your passion. And when you follow that passion, you will actually excel. This is something that uh, we see in students today. There are people who come to computer science because of just taking a little back. Why did you just, on the fourth year, an exit interview, typically we have with some of our students. Sir, I don't, I should not have taken this computer science. Why? I should have taken engineering physics. I later realized that engineering physics is much better than computer science. 
I have the passion because I've gone for physics Olympiad. I've gone across the world to solve physics problems. And today quantum computing has come. So physics would have been a better choice for me. I should have gone to EP. I don't know why the hell I got this top 200 rank and got dragged into your stupid computer science. I'm from the computer science department. Okay, so, so these are, I see this, it's, it's becoming quite common. It's not some rare guy telling this. A lot of students say. So my simple answer to this is just follow the passion. And how many parents are here? Can you put your hands up? Only one, two, three, four, good. Okay. So parents and students, parents who are students also can put their hands up. <laughs> okay. I also request, I had been making this very vocally, I have been telling this, that never force your child to do what you want. Allow the child to do what they want. And that's very, very important. All stress, all strain, everything comes because they are forced to do what the parents want rather than what the, what the child would have ob obviously done and would have excelled. I fully adhere to the views of that uh, movie Three Idiots where one was, should have been a photographer drive, driven into engineer and many things that you see there. I think to solve that problem, IIT Madras at least now has given this option for all our BTEC students. They can do an interdisciplinary dual degree program. So by the end of second year, all those JE rank, all these would have forgotten. And what your friend got, what you didn't get, everything would be forgotten. At that point, they will start realizing what is really their passion? And now we have some 20 odd courses, 20 odd M.Tech programs in which this passion can be mapped and the student can pursue that passion. So to answer in a nutshell, please follow your heart. Dil ke saath jao, industry ke saath nahi. Thank you. Okay, friends. Sorry, I need to rush. I have some medical emergency. I would love to answer all the questions that you have. But feel free to be, you're all IITMs. Very happy that you are here. I wish you all the best. And all of you complete the degree, the four-year degree, and make my hands tired signing all your certificates. Thank you very much. <laughs>